Attila the Hen by Mel Cannot. 124 was spiteful, so spiteful that no one had wanted the responsibility of naming her. They simply referred to her by the number on the faded orange tag attached around her spindly ankle. Normally, it was Judd who named the chickens. Clever, funny names, like Victoria Peckham and Yolko Ono. But after they had tried to cut the tag off 124's ankle and she'd bitten Judd, drawing blood, he'd refused. Bloody bird, he had sworn, sucking the blood from his thumb. She can name a damn self. Judd was 14 and had begun to swear more and more, which neither of the mums particularly liked. But he was right about one thing. The chicken was a bloody mess, bloody-minded and bloody spiteful. So 124, she remained. The morning air was fresh and cool, not ice cold like in winter, but there was a soft chill that prickled Lulu's skin with the promise of spring. As she made her way to the yard that housed the chickens, keeping them safe from foxes, Lulu inhaled deeply. The scent of eucalyptus peppered her nostrils as the plastic bucket bumped against her legs. She was still in her pyjamas, candy-striped cotton, with a light jacket over the top. Her pockets were filled with seed to both feed and distract the hens as she went about collecting their eggs. Lulu dawdled as she got closer to the pen, even though she knew Marmel was waiting in the kitchen of their ramshackle farmhouse for her to return. She'd been sneaky, Marmel, when she asked Lulu to collect the eggs. She handed Lulu the red plastic bucket and turned away quickly so that she couldn't see her daughter's protests. She didn't have to avoid hearing them. Lulu didn't speak. Hadn't said a word in the five years since Mum El and Mum Kate had adopted her. No one knew why she couldn't speak, only that it wasn't physical. Selective mutism, the last doctor, one of Mum Kate's colleagues, had said. Mum Kate said selective meant a choice, but Lulu didn't think that was true. She didn't choose to be silent. She had tried speaking, her lips silently forming syllables. The words just wouldn't come. The doctor thought something might have happened to her before her mums adopted her, something that made her not want to talk. If it had, Lulu couldn't remember. She'd been three when the mums brought her home. Anything that happened before didn't matter as far as she was concerned. In spite of her tiny steps, Lulu reached the yard all too quickly. Her gum boots, the bright yellow of a fresh yolk, was slick with morning dew. The air over here smelled less like the towering eucalypts and more like Mamel's daffodils. We're the smattering of chicken poo. Lulu paused outside the yard, as she did whenever Mum L asked her to collect the eggs. At only eight, 124 had taught Lulu the benefits of caution. Her eyes scanned the yard, locating each chicken in turn. Victoria and Yoko were over in the corner of the yard farthest from Lulu, pecking and scratching at something in the grass. Probably a worm. The three Hannifers, Aniston, Lawrence and Lopez, were in front of Cluckingham Palace, the ironically named chicken coop huddled together like gossiping mothers at the school gate. Every few seconds, one of them would emit a small cluck, adding to the effect. Eggy Pop and Feather Mills were near the trough, where they both liked to take the occasional dip in the shallow water. Now they stood in front of it, as though they were sizing it up. On the other side of the fence, in her own pen, Clementine, the aging donkey, watched them with interest. Finally, Lulu spotted her, hiding in the shade of a tree, scratching alone in the dirt. Unlike the other chickens, 124 preferred her own company. Spiteful thing that she was. Lulu had learnt from experience that it was better to climb over the fence into the yard rather than risk opening and closing the squeaky gate. If she opened it, 124 might notice her, might rush at her, beak flapping, ready to draw blood. Or worse, the bloody bird might rush for the gate and into Mamel's garden, ready to wreak havoc on the unsuspecting azaleas. No, better to go over. Lulu slid her left arm through the bucket's handle and climbed over the fence. It was easier, now she was eight and bigger and not so frightened of falling. She paused at the top of the fence, taking in the world from up high, wondering if this is what it looked like all the time to adults. As she scanned the yard below once more, the chickens seemed to have shrunk. They were all in the same spots, even 124. Some mornings, the spiteful bird would be waiting at the gate, ready to terrorise whoever came for her eggs, which she guarded like the crown jewels. This morning, luck was on Lulu's side. 124 was distracted. Lulu slid down the other side of the fence, her feet landing softly in the yard. The sun gently caressed the back of her neck. She needed to hurry up. After getting home late last night, Mum Kate needed to leave for work early again this morning, this time at the local clinic. She'd want eggs to take with her, to give to some of her older patients, the ones who used to keep chickens themselves, before they got too old. 
the ones who swore the eggs Mum Kate bought tasted far better than any that could be bought from the small townlet's lone supermarket. Mum L didn't understand why Mum Kate took such pains to keep her older patients in eggs, but Mum Kate said that it was important, that it helped foster good relationships with these patients, some of whom didn't much trust a lady doctor, and certainly not one with a wife of her own. Mum L would scoff at this, but Lulu got it. As her school's resident freak, Lulu knew a thing or two about being an outsider. She wondered if giving her classmates eggs would stop their taunting. Probably not. Not unless she were to throw them, laughing as the yolks slid down her beliefs' faces. Lulu ventured into the yard, doing the opposite of dawdling now. She moved as quickly as she could without attracting the chickens' attention, heading towards Cockingham Palace and the treasure inside. The three Hannafers looked at her curiously, and Lulu threw a handful of seed in their direction so they wouldn't cluck and rat her out. Lulu's heart clamoured in her chest. She wished she weren't the one collecting the eggs, wished that she were like Judd and could voice her protests, or that Judd had made it to the kitchen first this morning. Lulu's legs were jelly. Please, she thought, don't let 124 see me. She was nearly at the coop now, where she could lift the lid on the roosting box and collect the eggs in a matter of seconds. Lulu calmed at this thought, anticipating the warmth of the eggs, so frail but so solid, in the palms of her tiny hands. She was nearly there. She was already lifting the lid on the roosting box when she heard it, the sound of grass and dirt being kicked up by clawed feet, propelling a certain chicken towards her. She dropped the lid, the eggs suddenly forgotten. Her terror returned tenfold as she spun around. 124 was coming at her with a speed that Lulu wouldn't have thought possible for a chicken. Like Lulu, the hen was silent. From the day they had brought 124 home, she had been like this, never clucking like the other chickens did. Were she not so spiteful, this might have made Lulu like the bird. As it was, Lulu stood frozen to the ground, terrified. Not that it would have mattered much. Having caught sight of her, it wouldn't matter where Lulu ran. Lulu scrambled backwards onto the roosting box, scooting her bottom onto it and pulling her legs up just as 124 reached her. The bird missed her by a tenth of a second, slamming into the side of the coop instead. 124 was unperturbed. She reeled back and began attacking the bucket, which Lulu had dropped in her rush to get out of the chicken's way. Bright bits of plastic went flying as 124's beak ripped into the bucket, effectively slaughtering it. Lulu watched from above in horror, realising that she had no place to go. 124 was done with the bucket now and paraded in front of the plastic corpse, daring Lulu to try and escape. To set foot on the ground was to surrender herself to 124's mercy. Instead, Lulu nervously stood up on the roosting box, her legs quivering beneath her. From up here, Lulu didn't have many options. She could climb down from the roosting box and try to make a break for it, but she didn't feel like letting her legs suffer the same fate as the bucket. Or she could wait. Eventually, Mum L or Mum Kate would notice that Lulu hadn't returned, would come outside looking for her to find her cowering on the coop. Her mums wouldn't laugh at her. Lulu knew that. No, they wouldn't laugh. Instead, they'd give her that look. The look they had given Lulu at the doctor's office. The look they gave her when all the other kids in her class were invited to a party and Lulu wasn't. The look they gave her after one of the teachers at Lulu's school had suggested she'd be better off in a special school, even though Lulu could keep up with her classmates perfectly. It was a look that Lulu hated, that made her open her clothes, her mouth like a fish, willing the sounds to come out. It made her cry when they didn't. Lulu didn't know that she could handle that look. Not over chickens. There was one other option, Lulu realised. Cockingham Palace was on the far side of the yard, not too far from the fence. If she were to climb up onto the roof of the coop, perhaps she could jump over it and land safely in Clementine's pen. She might land in a donkey pad or collect a bruise or two, but that was preferable to being attacked by 124. It was the option Judd would take. Judd, her brother, who didn't mind having a silent sister because it meant he could talk more. Judd, who had welcomed her into their family when she was still a toddler, holding her chubby hand and introducing her to all the different animals, so busy talking he hadn't noticed that she didn't speak until three days after her arrival, who told her not to worry about bullies or stupid teachers, because to him Lulu was smarter and better than any of them. Judd was brave. Judd could talk. Judd would jump. Her arms and legs tingling with nerves, Lulu climbed onto the coop's roof, her gumboots gripped the waterproof coating, reassuring her. Up here, Lulu felt both incredibly vulnerable and invincible all at once. The coop was only a metre or so high, but to Lulu it felt like more. Below, 124 paced backwards and forwards, 
waiting for the egg thief to come down and experience her wrath. The other chickens didn't seem to notice what was going on, or if they did, they didn't care. Now that she was up here, Lulu felt committed. She would not be climbing down. The fence wasn't too far from the coop, maybe a metre, but probably less. Lulu felt certain that she could make the jump, land safely on the other side. Her legs were tightly coiled springs, ready to launch her away from 124, who couldn't peck through chicken wire, no matter how spiteful she was. Lulu's heart soared in anticipation. She took off. Lulu's flight from the pen would have disappointed even the most relaxed gymnastics coach. She didn't make it anywhere near the fence. Instead, Lulu landed with a thud in the yard, her right leg twisting painfully under her and making a sickening crack. For a moment, Lulu was so shocked she didn't feel the pain. Then it began to flood her system, overwhelming her. Lulu wanted to scream, but couldn't even muster a whimper. She lay in the dirt, panting like a parched dog. 124 screamed for her. The second Lulu had fallen, the chicken had begun squawking so loudly, so violently, that for a moment Lulu thought it was a fire alarm. Lulu wanted to crawl away, to pull herself through the dirt before 124 could reach her. But when she tried rolling over onto her stomach, pain erupted through her. She lay on her back in the yard, panting and helpless. Silent. That's how they found her a few minutes later, lying on her back with 124 perched on top of her chest, still emitting a squawk that was like nothing any of them had ever heard before. The bird was protecting her, calling for help when Lulu couldn't, and 124 only stopped when Mum Kate reached her, noticed the sickening angle that her leg was twisted at. Even then, though, 124 refused to move, pecked at the hands of anyone who tried to lift her from Lulu's chest. Lulu's fingers stroked the hen's feathers while they waited for the ambulance. They felt soft, silky, slightly greasy, and kept her calm. It was only when the paramedics brought a stretcher over that 124 consented to be removed. But even then, the hen stayed close, watching them all with her menacing black eyes, making sure they took care of the human she had suddenly claimed as her own. From that day on, 124 continued to attack anyone who dared come into her yard. Anyone but Lulu. Lulu she would let pass, not even giving her a token protest peck when she collected the eggs. It was as though they were bound, as though the chicken, formerly known as 124, for Judd had finally consented to name her Attila the Hen, admired Lulu for her attempted escape, even though it had failed completely. Or perhaps they were bound by their joint silence, as Attila never squawked again. For everyone else, Attila remained what she had always been, vindictive and mean. But for Lulu, Attila the hen was something entirely different. The chicken, bloody spiteful thing that she was, was beloved.